Yes, I'm recording. Okay, uh, this is a brilliant question, especially if you're a Course in Miracles student. Uh, the Course in Miracles often says um, there are no problems or and, um, <clears throat> and, and uh, that the world is just an illusion. So probably I just need to shift my perception or check or release my ego perception and the miracle and the shift in perception will occur. So, but is that, do you ever need to take action in the world or can you just sort of sit down and with a course in miracles and just do everything and everything will be, um, everything's gonna be great. And um, I mean, the thing to get with that is uh, levels of consciousness um, uh, or conscious, you know, am I in, um, where am I? And what is the intention of doing the Course in Miracles? And there's another aspect, which is, is the Course in Miracles always practical? Um, so, I mean, the thing with the Course in Miracles, there are a, a, what I'd call advanced levels of surrender, where you just have a, a, a very dedicated spiritual discipline and you don't stop it no matter what. And you're even okay for, uh, you know, uh, 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 probably I'll be taken out of context with this video, but you're, you're okay no matter what happens, a hurricane, your roof's blowing off, whatever it is to keep surrendering. And, 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 you, do, and you, um, you try and resist the urge to control the world in any way. Uh, until everything is dissolved. And, and many people will be happy to let their bodies go, uh, to not be tempted by the world. I think, so. now why is that okay in some situations with certain spiritual seekers in a certain context? Is because they're making a very, very radical commitment to go into enlightenment or to realize God consciousness, no matter what. It's called uh, the final run. I mean, it's like, you know, I'm going to sit on this rock and or I'm going to sit in this cave and I'm going to pray or meditate or go into stillness or observe. And if the body dies or is eaten by a lion or something, so be it. And um, that has, uh, this is going to sound weird, but when there's that level of dedication uh, uh, and the context is right, that is the right thing to do, which I know will be taken out of context to people. Um, but, you know, the thing to realize with the course is it's aimed at full dissolution of the ego, uh, total release of every single illusion to realize the holy instant, God consciousness, um, enlightenment. So that's what it's not aimed to help you do plumbing or, or if you've got like a block toilet or anything like that. Um, and uh, but it's not necessarily practical if you've got a pressing problem in the world that needs resolved. And I will say with this is to see it like, what's your vibration when you take action? So uh, if you, let's say, and I always say my practical advice is, uh, it's always good to have spiritual mentors and spiritual groups to go to, because that can be sometimes a quick place to get, um, to get inspiration when the ego is blocked. The ego gets blocked and the divine guidance doesn't come because, there, there could be so much repressed feelings, fear and guilt and shame, and so many limiting beliefs that, and, and it seems to be there's a deadline from the world, like um, pay your mortgage by next week, or we're going to send the bailiffs around. So there isn't enough time to 100% clear that. Uh, and you're still, you'll still probably be in fear, clearing and cancelling away. So um, it's not really that practical because where you're at in order to you don't it seems like in the world I mean time is also an illusion but in the world of time and space and and locality um, it seems like there's not enough time on a practical basis to to do this so it seems like action is required if that was the case like if I had a, a letter a brown envelope saying uh, pay the mortgage by next week or we're sending the bailiffs around um, I would um, Oh, yeah, that is quite, I didn't, uh, okay, how would I handle that? I would actually, uh, if I had a 12-step sponsor or a Course in Miracles group or a spiritual mentor, I would definitely speak to the, those guys. Um, but in other, uh, other words, um, yeah, I would, yeah, I think it, it, it's good to be practical 
maybe speak to any professional advisors as well, because you know, sometimes that will be helpful. The, the solution comes in the direct relationship to, the, to how much one has cleared the fear, the guilt, and the limiting beliefs. So you're only eligible for uh, divine intervention, shall we say, or a miracle to the extent that you're out of ego. Uh, so um, I think the 12 steps is very good. If you're still in fear and trying to control around a situation, usually, um, and in my own experience, the miracle uh, isn't as good. It's like, oh, I still have fear and I'm hoping for a miracle. I still have a lot of beliefs and, and unforgiveness. Then it's not going to be um, a, a, what I call a, a, a something profound. So I think it's, uh, you know, having mentors, seeking um, uh, professional advice with practical problems, I think is, is good because, um, but if you're, if you're like devoted and you go, I'm, gonna, I'm happy to sit on a rock no matter what. I mean, it does bring up another thing, which is it might not be the right context for a spiritual student. It might be more advisable for where they are in their spiritual journey to actually, you know, call up a solicitor or a plumber or um, speak to their spiritual group or 12-step group and get, get practical advice. Because the un I mean, any answer will come from what level of ego inflation is still existing in the spiritual student and where they go for their answer. When everything, if the student's ego is 100% dissolved, a miracle will happen. And um, I, in my experience, uh, I'll try and get this right. Uh, in my experience, probably 99%, of the, I know this sounds profound, mystical, 99% of the time, if I can clear 100% of the fear and the thoughts around it, uh, through cancelling A Course in Miracles, The Observer, until there's nothing remained. There's absolutely nothing there. And 99% of times, uh, there's a profound miracle in the world uh, that shifts. Um, and the 1%, uh, when it doesn't happen uh, the way you know my ego would want it to, there's such neutrality, it's kind of irrelevant anyway, whether it happened or not. So that's my experience, but not necessarily practical. I and mean, that would be the thing. So the practicality is the practical thing I would say with, is to understand uh, levels of God consciousness and ego consciousness to realize that the, um, the universe, God, grace will do its bit to the extent the ego is out of the way. If you can't get the ego out of the way enough in time for a practical deadline, then do, do what's practical. Uh, in the world, what would seem to be practical, like a good friend or a, a spiritual group or a spiritual mentor would advise you to do, as that's what's practical. Um, um, so, yeah, you know, um, but all of the course lessons are very, very useful and they do aid the right people, places, and situations or a profound miracle happening. Um, because the more I identify with that, there is a problem, like, oh, I, can't, I haven't got enough money. So those thoughts, uh, the more I identify with them, the more fear comes up, the more likely the situation is going to seem bad. And the more I can clear or cancel or hand over those thoughts and release those fears or guilts or observe them away, um, uh, the more you're letting in the infinite light, grace uh, and wisdom of the universe come to you. And that has been uh, my experience. Um, so I'll stop there.